G'day folks, well it's the uh, 1st of July 2021 today. I woke up early morning, I thought I've been punching last chance for victory from MMP Games, the Battle of Gettysburg, and I thought it would be timely to get some of these scenarios out and on the table. So I thought I'd start with this one. This is the Dogs of War. It's got a mini training scenario. Um, it's a sort of a one little sheet here designed to sort of introduce players to um, the game and the rules. Uh, focuses on a peach orchard, and of course this happened on the 2nd of July, 1863, in the evening. Uh, so I should be playing it tomorrow, but <laughs> the reason I'm starting this is I'm still punching the rest of the Union forces. Um, I'd like to start with early morning on the 1st, but anyway, um, this, is, this, is, this is what's available, this is where I'm starting. Yeah, hey muzzle paint, muzzle paint. Um, so the objective here is to get, um, so I'll read to the order, Barksdale's Brigade is to uh, attack on the north of the Millstown Road, along here, uh, so as to exit as many SPs as possible out of the play area via the west edge, this little red line over here. Wofford is to support Barksdale's attack on or south of the track leading to the Peter Fossil Farm, which is this hex, this, this little, little road track here. So we'll basically have Barksdale's um, brigade moving up here, and then Warford towards the centre. Um, with, uh, yeah, Graham and um, the New Jersey brigade kind of around the peach orchard here, uh, kind of out of the line and exposed. So let's get straight to it. Um, in fact, I need to grab my tweezers because this could be a bit fiddly. Okay, so the Confederates start first. It is 6 p.m. And um, well, they're gonna start shifting off to the left. Actually, let's start with their artillery. What have we got? We have got um, Patterson's battery of uh, Lane's Battalion. They've got eight, eight SPs firing. Um, nothing particularly special about this fire. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They can hit. I need some dice as well. That'd be good. Here we go. So eight SPs firing at this unit here, the 71st New York, minus one column shift for range, and they roll an 11 to get things started. That's a, uh, a good opening barrage <laughs> that would exhaust their ammunition, and there's no additional artillery ammunition available, so I think <laughs> they might be done. But they do cause, what I say? Um, and 11 on the four will cause two steps. Yeah, so good, good, uh, a good opening salvo. And these are D, T rated morale union defenders. So their roll on the table, and that'll be a good one. Yep, A6, they are shaken and back one. And we have some Union cowardly legs in that hex. Ooh, okay, there's some other little bits and pieces of artillery. We've got uh, Alexander's battalion sort of mixed in among these forces. Here we have Gilbert and Moody. They'll fire at strength eight over here on the 150, 105th pen. Strength eight, one column shift to the left. A roll of five won't do any damage. And then we have Alexander here, um, six. He's an artillery leader, so we'll fire on the same unit. A roll of seven will cause a morale check. They are B rated. So a roll of eight, B rated. Next to the cowardly legs though, we'll see them shaken and back one. So that cowardly legs modifier was just enough to push them back. Shaken and back one, all they're doing here is opening some ground to the north 
to enable uh, Barksdale's brigade to move forward. And we'll get Parker now to fire at that artillery in front. A bit of counter battery fire. Uh, a six, a four, what's the range here? One, two, three, yeah, so it'll be on the three column and a six won't have any effect, unfortunately. That's all the artillery. Now we can start moving these guys up. So. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now we'll bring, um, oh, here we go, these guys as well. One, two, three, four, five. Six and Warford to their right. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Um, six. And I'm just looking at that artillery out front and wondering, two, three, four, five, I could charge it with, I'd like to have a good A-ranked unit, and I've just, I don't have any. <laughs> so we'll send the 24th Georgians straight, I think, oh, it's, uh, yeah, 24th Georgians, one, two, three, four. They are going to roll to close which they succeed, and they're going to try to charge, so they'll roll to close, and they'll fail, unfortunately, just stop short. So we'll then bring the 18th Jordan around to their left. One, two, three, four, five, um, six. And protecting the right, one, two, three, four, I think we'll hold, oh, we'll hold there, or do we keep pushing? I think we'll hold there for now. Just protecting our right flank, giving us some flexibility. So here we are, after the first Confederate turn. There's the line, Barksdale's Brigade, pushing as fast as possible. Um, there should be some more Union cavalry legs here because they retreated as well. Now we get to the Union turn. And well, basically they want to block the road. Um, so, but, um, okay, he's a zero rated leader, so we need to roll for his movement, and they're not going to move, that's on one, so, uh, you roll the die for these zero rated command leaders, if you roll a one, they don't move at all, a two to three, they move at half, uh, so the pressure is now on, Graham's 1st Brigade. Um, and... And... <laughs> I think they've got to shift over to the right here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, one, they'll roll to close, they'll succeed, just checking what we've got here, yeah, nine SPs, one, two, they could have a shot, let's have a go, they suffer an opening volley, which will cause a hit, and they are down to five SPs. And they'll shoot at McLaws's lead, um, lead regiment. Five SPs with a range, down to two to three. A seven will cause a morale check. They're with McLaws, so they should be fine. Even a roll of 10 for a B rank, an A-ranked unit will be fine with McLaws. Okay, so no damage there. This um, 
there's Brooklyn, is that Brooklyn? Oh, sorry, Buckland um, with the Napoleons. Dense canister at very close range. Six shooting here. We'll go two to the right. No, three to the right. Six, one, two, three. I've never rolled on the C column before. So we only roll a three. Despite rolling a three, it's actually one hit. Um, that could have been devastating, but terrible roll. They make a morale check and they're fine with a roll of six. Um, we'll bring the uh, rest of the first two. We'll roll to close as well. They succeed. Do they succeed or do they fail? They succeed. Right. Um, so that's the now the first first brigade shifting to the right. We've got a bit of a mix here. We've got a bit of a New Jersey brigade, and then the third brigade and second brigade. Um, they will just sort of creep forward a little bit. One, two, and they'll have an opening. They'll have a shot as well. So they suffer an opening volley which has no effect. Now they'll shoot with their five at range. Will cause no effect either. Um, and of course, we have a bit of artillery behind the lines, not much, just the one. There we go. What do we got over here? Nothing, headquarters. So what can they see? They can't see a great deal. But there's a big ridge in their way, basically. They can't see much at all in a terrible place. So, yeah, I guess that's the end of the Union turn, and we shift to 6.15 p.m. Confederate turn again. Oh, first of all, of course, we should rally these Union forces. All right, back to the Confederates, and there is now some infantry regiments in their way. Um, and let's blast them with artillery, try and get them off the hill. So we'll look back here at um, Patterson's guns, 8 SP, 1 to the left, a roll of 9, that's how we get it done, that's a 1 SP loss on these guys, they will make a morale check, they are B ranked, a roll of 10 will likely see them skedaddling off the hill, shaken, back 1 with 1 loss, could have been worse. And shaken back one with one loss. And importantly, some cowardly legs. Um, we'll now get Gilbert and Moody to shoot at this formation. They have eight SPs, one to the left, a roll of three. I'm sure won't do anything. Um, we'll look at Alexander here. And they'll shoot at the 68th pen in the centre. And a roll of seven. How many guns have we got here? So six SPs. Is a, a seven causes a morale check on, and then they've got cowardly legs. So it's a seven, eight for a D ranked unit. They are disorganized, back three with one loss. One, two, three. One loss sees them reduced to four. And they are disorganized. And the last little battery here, they're going to shoot straight over at... Can they see? Yeah, they can see the 71st New York from there along the kind of edge of their hex. So four SPs, minus one for range, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In fact, that'd be here, just one to the left. A roll of eight. So three, eight will cause morale check on the 71st New York. They roll an eight, but with the cowardly legs, that's a nine, which means they're shaken and back one. Okay, now let's bring up the, uh, the infantry. And because there are cowardly legs here, 
and they're already shaken, I'm tempted to kind of charge somehow. It's going to be difficult though. I think we're going to come up and then shift to the right and try and drive down there. But that would also clear out that area. So Barksdale's men will kind of go one, two, three. They'll try to roll to close into here. They pass. Four. Roll to close again. They pass. They suffer an opening volley from that formation, which is not wrecked. One more hit and they're wrecked. So an opening volley on a charge table will not do any damage with a roll of one. Of course, the attacker is now large. They will suffer a hit. Now they're wrecked, and they're without leadership, and they make a morale check, which is not good, let me tell you. And they, what formation are they? B-ranked unit, 10, 11, 12, 13 for being wrecked, 14, they're routed, loss, of, they're, they're basically gone. Um, they lose two more, but they've only got two steps there, so they're eliminated, and he can advance into there. This now, opens this northern route, sorry, northern route, yeah, <laughs> northern edge of the map, one, two, three, four, five, six, we could be almost off the map, but do we kind of focus and try to work our way around and do some more damage? Um, hey Richard, welcome, now you're welcome. Um, I'm still punching the rest of the game. So I, I played a couple of scenarios on Vassal, um, which I don't tend to film, but uh, look, I've got, I've got four, four Union Call left to clip. So not far, not far from done. And hopefully I'll get to that tonight. Um, I'm kind of, do I just rush off the map here or do I help? I think they kind of, they kind of want to, keep pushing. Let's see what we can do here with um, these guys. They'll just shoot. They've got eight SPs, point blank range, rifled muskets I'm pretty sure. A roll of nine will cause one hit on these guys. So they are now down to three. They must make a morale check. They are B ranked, but with Graham. And a nine goes up to 10 for the cowardly legs. 11 because they're now small. Down to nine because of Graham. And they're safe because they are. No, they're not safe. They're B ranked. Shaken and back one. Um, Shaken and back one. Okay. And again, keep in mind the cowardly legs, only only one of these apply. You only have apply cowardly legs once, regardless of how many counters there are on or adjacent to the unit. Alright, this opens some big gaps. I could send both of these formations off rushing to the north. They could both leave the map immediately, really. Um, in theory, you know, <laughs> if you really want to approach this as sort of a struggle for victory points, you could just put them in column and drive off, but that would be really <laughs> unrealistic and ahistorical, so um, I think, what, what do we want to do here? Well, let's start with the, the units that are actually locked in combat, so these guys here will shoot at, oh, look, they should really charge, shouldn't they? They can't charge, they can't, can they change formation? I can't recall, they'll shoot. Eight SPs. Eight SPs, six will cause a morale check on the 63rd pen. And they will actually pass that, so no effect. Um, well, noting that kind of failure, we will now charge with these guys. So they'll roll to close into here. They will succeed. They'll roll to close to charge, but they'll succeed again. Now there's an opening volley which will cause two hits on the 18th Georgians. But they're still large, and they'll cause a hit onto the 63rd pen. They must now make 
a morale check. And uh, it's not a good one for a C-ranked unit. Um, they are now... Yeah, they're still large, that's okay. But a 9 goes up to 10 for the cowardly legs. And on a C-ranked unit, that is disorganised back 3 with 1 loss. 1, 2, 3. 1 loss means they're now small. And, of course, they're disorganised. But the charge continues. That's 1, 2... Roll to close. Yes. Three. Roll to close. No, they fail that. So they're stopped just short of hitting. I was really hoping to charge into that shaking stack there. Um, we've got Wofford. Uh, the 24th Georgians here. All right, next to this artillery. Um, it's very tempting to charge, but with that minus three modifier, it's going to be very difficult. Oh, look, I'll give it a go, I guess. Um, they fail. Uh, the problem with that means it is now that um, I think the artillery gets an opening volley. If you attempt to charge, there is a clarification on this. If you attempt to charge, you get a normal non-charge opening volley. It's not a charge volley. Okay, so normal opening volley. We'll do a hit on those guys. They're down to four. And I'll now shoot with four SPs, seven causing morale check on the artillery, which will pass. And uh, yeah, they're done. So all we need to do now is move these guys up. One, and I'll roll to close. They succeed. Two, to lock these infantry formations into combat, basically. Um, and they're not... Uh, look, they're looking at a D-ranked unit here. They'll shoot straight ahead. So we do get a counter volley, which will actually cause a hit on the Confederates. But they'll return fire with five SPs causing a 10, which 5, 10 is just the one hit, but they don't have much to lose. They're not wrecked yet, but they are D-ranked, and they'll take morale check. That's a 6, and I think they're going to be okay. D-ranked 6, nope, they're pretty vulnerable. Shaken and back one. I'm losing, I'm running out of cowardly legs markers. Okay, ah, that's about it for, oh no, we've got all these guys in them I haven't done anything with here. Okay, what do we do here? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so I'm kind of, it's a middle position here. I'm not charging straight through, but I'm putting myself in a position to certainly do so while supporting. The, um, the left flank of this of Barksdale's attack. All right, we can do more. We could, if I come bring this unit down to here, it locks up this space. So if I go one, two, three, let me reconsider that. It's an A-ranked unit. I'm also thinking maybe I could charge straight down here. So if we go one, two, roll to close to their left, they succeed. Three. Roll to close down here. Success. Yeah, it's a really nice. This is just it. One little introductory map. This is from Last Chance for Victory, the Gettysburg game from the line of battle. These guys will get an opening volley. They will miss completely. They are facing a large attacker charging them, so they suffer a hit. They are now small. They must now make a morale check, which they will fail and are shaken back one. Shaken back one. Um, they'll advance and they'll roll to close again. They'll succeed. They'll suffer another opening volley, which will cause one hit on them. I think this was a good move. 
this decision to charge with this A-ranked unit. They just have the morale edge. The, uh, the defenders now suffer one automatic hit. And they must make a morale check, which is not good. This B-ranked unit, 10, 11 for shaken, 12 for being small, 13 for cowardly legs, sees them disorganized, back four with two losses. So they are now disorganized, back four with two losses. So if I can pick them all up. One, two, three, four with two losses. So one for the lead unit and one for the unit below. And they'll advance. And what they've done there is lock both of those Union forces in combat and clear basically a nice little corridor along the north there. Um, and look, I think McLaws, has he activated? I have a feeling they may have. Um, we do have Wofford though behind the lines. And um, well, he's under orders to support the right hand flank. Let's do another charge, eh? So one, two, we're gonna roll to close into that hex there. Fail. That's a B ranked unit, they rolled a one. So they'll stand there and they'll shoot. They will suffer an opening volley which will hit them and cause a step loss. So they get down to three. And they'll respond with eight SPs at range. And nine will cause just one hit on this formation. That brings them down to two. That's okay. They suffer a morale check. They're B ranked, but with a leader. And they pass that handily. All right, shifting around to, we do Confederate rally, but there is nothing to rally. They're looking pretty healthy. So now Union forces, and um, yeah, they're in trouble. A lot of shaken and disorganized formations. Let's start with the artillery here. They're kind of on low ground. It's hard for them to see anything. Oh, it's the same hill. So technically this is all the same hill. So they'll shoot way up the top here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now roll a 10, this is six SPs, but one to the left range, and a 10 will cause one hit on that formation. And they're down to eight. They'll make a morale check, which they'll pass handily. It might have been bloodlust if they were adjacent. Um, and that's it for Union Artillery. Now they can't really, well, let's, let's try, let's start here. We've got the 73rd New York shooting at these guys. So they've got seven SPs, a roll of four, which is not going to do anything. Um, now we've got these guys, six SPs, rolling a 12, that's better. That'll cause two losses on these formations, or this formation, sorry. And that'll wipe them out. Wow. When did they get so low? Um, okay. What can we do now? We've got to shift, keep shifting out to the right. So, one, two. Three. Three, four, five. Six. If we move any further, we'll get hit in the flank. And they are still shaken, of course. They're both shaken. Um, hmm. These guys are locked in combat. So they'll take a shot. And how many SPs do we have? We have five, six, seven. Seven SPs shooting off to their left. And a roll of five will cause a morale check which the Georgians will fail. That's a 10 for a B-ranked unit, so they're shaken back line with one loss. Now reduced to half strength. 
I'm going to take this marker because they're about to rally anyway. Um, all right, let's try and get these guys. I'm wondering if I should try and charge with the C-ranked unit. It seems absurd, doesn't it? Let's get the Buckland's artillery to shoot into this formation. Um, again, dense canister. A nine, that's much better. That's actually going to be two losses on these guys. They're going to be wrecked. Oh, actually, it's going to be one from that formation. Oh, wrong one, sorry. Looking at the wrong stack. Looking at these guys here who got hit in the flank as well, um, which is another modifier. Oh, geez, it's off the chart. That's actually three step losses for these guys. They're gone. Hit in the rear by artillery with dense canister. Um, okay, so we've got third Michigan here. They're pretty free here to uh, think about their options. Um, I guess let's move forward and tie up these Confederate forces. I've got a roll to close, of course, which they pass, luckily, and they will shoot. They get an opening volley against them, which does call the hit. They're down to four SPs. And they will now shoot with four SPs, causing an eight, which is a step loss against this formation. And that'll be a morale check, but I'm pretty confident they'll pass that. In fact, they're bloodlusted. That's not what you want to see on some charging Confederates. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've got some more shaken forces down the bottom here. They're very low. They'll shift in there and not shoot. We will get these guys having a shot though. Five SPs and eight will cause one step loss. Every little bit helps. They'll suffer a morale check, but again, A ranked. They're fine, in fact, they're bloodlusted. Oh my goodness. More bloodlusted Georgians. Not what the Union wants to see. Okay, and that's about it for the Union. We can we can sort of shift these disorganized forces um, up a bit. I'll kind of get a bit closer to the action. Um, and then we rally. And we're halfway through the scenario. So look, quick start folks, I'm going to wrap it up here, um, half an hour in, but yeah, that's how it plays. I'll continue this later in the day. Um, the way this works is basically because it's such a small, quick playing scenario, the, uh, the victory conditions instruct you to basically play it twice and swap sides and see who can exit the most Confederate forces. Um, so it's not necessarily can the Union stop them, but rather how successful can you be as a Confederates? And then you swap over, swap over and see who can be the most successful as the, uh, the Confederates. Um, we also need to remove these Union cowardly legs. I'll quickly do that. But, um, yeah, two turns to go. Confederate turn coming up. I don't think, I mean, it's, it's hard for the un Union to stop them. They need to get... Oh, I also should have done, sorry, rules mistake. I should have rolled for the movement of these guys that turn. I completely forgot about the zero ranked leader. I'm trying to move through this quickly. Uh, okay. Well, folks, wrapping up here. Take care. I'll be back to continue this probably later this afternoon. So we're looking at maybe eight, nine hours from now. All right, everyone. Catch you all later.